ஹரி ஓம் லெஸ் ஸ்டார்ட் வித் த ப்ரேயர் ஓம் சமஸ்த ஜன கல்யாணி நிரத்தம் கருணாமயம் நமாமி சின்மயம் தேவம் சத்குரும் பிரம்ம வித்வரம் வசுதேவசுதம் தேவம் கம்சாணூரமர்தனம் தேவகி பரமானந்தம் கிருஷ்ணம் வந்தே ஜகத்குரும் மீவ மாதாச்சிதமீவ சாத்தமீவ வித்தியாவிடம் ஹரி ஓம் வி ஆர் லுக்கிங் அட் தி ஃபண்டமெண்டல்ஸ் ஆஃப் அத்வைத வேதாந்த அண்ட் இன் த ப்ராசஸ் த பேசிக் டாக்டின் இஸ் எசென்ஷியலி that brahman alone is real and everything else is apparently real or unreal that which cannot be experienced any time is unreal like vanja putra ha and that brahman alone real is also cannot be experienced because it's infinite and what is experience is neither comes under real or unreal because it's not unchanging there it is remains it continuously changes therefore it doesn't fulfill the requirement of nichyatvam that means eternally remaining the same and any finite things have to undergo a change and that's the definition of a finiteness and infiniteness cannot undergo a change and that alone is brahman so therefore satyam gnanam anantam brahma therefore brahman itself is infinite therefore it's alone is real from the definition that that which nityam that which does not undergo any change alone is real and the world is comes under not under brahman because it's continuously changing and it's not come under asat that is non existent since its experience so whatever experience comes under the world and that is neither real nor unreal according to the definitions that are provided for the reality and unreality and reality is there is no locus for existence and real is that which never undergoes any change this being a advaitic definition and what causes the creation is from the point of is is a non apprehension of the reality contributes to misapprehension so non apprehension is avidya and avidya contributes to the the projection of plurality and that's what we see the world that is the advaitic doctrine and how one became many that's what essentially upanishad says bahushyam praja eeti let me become many and he became many so whenever there is a change of state of one into many there is a force involved and that force is called maya shakti therefore we define ishvara is the one who can wield or who can yield the using the maya as creative power to create so maya adyakshena prakruti suyate sacharacharam so therefore krishna also says under my adyaksha prakruti is projecting so i am the one who is supporting the whole thing and therefore it is ishvara the using the maya shakti is creating so from the point of local entity that i am i do not know that i am conscious entity and i do not know that i am existent entity more importantly i do not know i am a state of happiness also so every individual is looking for happiness and according to vedanta happiness is only a limitless alone is completely happy otherwise i am looking for one kind of reflected happiness to the other therefore i'll never get satisfied with acquiring things however much i have acquired and in the taittiriya upanishad there is a hierarchy of for the anandam a one man who can own the whole universe and capable of doing everything is one unit of happiness and the gandharvas and the gods and so on if you go in the hierarchy there is a one is 100 times more happy than the other one and ultimately the one the prajapati the brahman or the the creative brahman which is essentially the chaturmukha brahman the one that according to the hindu scriptures the 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 three aspects of the ishvara the creative aspects is called brahman and his happiness 
which is called Hiranya Garbha, his happiness is 10 to the power of 26 of a human being's happiness. So there is a hierarchy of happiness, but absolute happiness is one that's only Brahman and that is Anantam means it is limitless. So that alone is completely, since I am looking for happiness and knowing very well happiness is not out there, therefore there is an ignorance of that fact that I am already happy. That means I am already Anantam, Anantameva Anandam, and that which is nothing but Brahman. So lack of knowledge, therefore ignorance is a problem for all my human sufferings. So that's a fundamental aspect of the Advaita Vedanta. It says the root cause for my suffering is due to ignorance. Then we are addressing how Bhagavan Ramanuja the questions the validity of these concepts in the in his three bhasha and you'll, the major major objection is coming from says who has the avidya who what is the locus of avidya and we went through all the steps involved so locus of avidya apparently has to be a jiva but also has to be brahman also why it can it has to be brahman we answered that there cannot be anything other than brahman if there is something other than the brahman brahman ceases to be Brahman. Brahman means infiniteness. It cannot exclude anything. Therefore, the locus of avijja, a locus of anything has to be, if that thing exists, the locus has to be Brahman only. Ultimately, Brahman only. So, Ramanuja objects that. Why? Because Brahman is of the nature of knowledge. How can knowledge and ignorance coexist? So, these are the the topics that we are discussing in terms of how to address this problem. At the same time, Brahman is the locus. At the same time, Brahman cannot be ignorant. So both are possible because from the Brahman point, there is no ignorance. In fact, there is nothing. In fact, no sajati, vijati, swagata, vedas, no differences of any kind and no words can be talked about. That is essentially na manaha gachati, na vak gachati, yadgatvara nivartante, tasyama. The, the walk cannot reach there or the mind cannot reach there and that's what the Upanishad statement therefore nothing can reach that means it is infinite they cannot something to reach because everything is only in the infinite so from Brahman pure Brahman point Avidya is not there but at the same time when we talk about the creation and all that and say Avidya is the root cause it cannot be other than Brahman as the locus because there cannot be anything other than the Brahman. So both statements appear to be contradictory. One statement says there cannot be anything in the Brahman. At the same time Brahman is the locus for Avidya also. So this contradiction is only possible or resolvable only because Brahman is from the ontological point it's an absolutely real whereas from the from the point of the transactional reality we are coming down to a different level because paramarthika satyam is different from a vyavaharika satyam the, the ignorance is also at the level of vyavaharika satyam Therefore, Krishna's statement himself is when he says, Mayatadabidam sarvam jagadavyakta murtina mastani sarvabhutani. Therefore, all beings are in me and I pervade the entire universe. And that's what is his nature of Brahman is emphasized. At the same time, he says, All beings are in me. That means in the infinite, there are as though beings in them. At the same time, in the very next sloka, he says, Najamastani bhutani. There are no beings in me also. So these two are contradictory statements made one after the other immediately and they are say he says Krishna is contradicting himself he's not contradicting himself he's looking from the ontologically at different levels of reality from the pure Brahman point there cannot be any jiva or there cannot be anything in that at the same time when you come to Vyavaharika Satyam there is a disparity distinctions and varieties and varieties of things are there and therefore Nachamastani Bhutani there are no beings in me is also right from the point of absoluteness and also the Mayatada Midam Sarvam Jagadavyakta Murtena Mastani Sarva Bhutani all beings are in me also both statements are valid in the same way, Brahman, the ignorance is the locus of Brahman, ignorant locus of ignorance is Brahman, is also right. At the same time, Brahman cannot have anything, no ignorance also. So how can I, how can one have the pure knowledge at the same time, the ignorance which is of the nature of darkness? That is the major objection of Bhagavan Ramanuja. 
Therefore, this can be answered only from the ontological status of one absolute real, another only relative real. And in this, even Ramanuja in his Vishishta Advaita accepts in one way or other. So for him also, there is one absolute changeless reality and also one is changing reality. What he calls changing reality, Advaita calls it Mitya. Because if it is changing, it cannot be absolutely real. But it is, since it is there, it is not it is non-existent. It is therefore neither Sat nor Asat. Therefore Sadasat Vilakshanam is Mitya. That's the definition according to the Advaita. But even Visistha Advaita emphasizes that there are two levels of the, the creation. One is called Leela Vibhuti and where the, everything is there and the distinctions are there. And there is a Divya Vibhuti or Nitya Vibhuti where pure Sattvic Guna is there. We'll go into the details of that later. But at least there also he, there is an emphasis of where Bhagavan is there, even though totality is there as a part of him, but he is unaffected by, he is not disturbed by what happens to the, the parts that are there. It's called the individuals that are part of the Brahman, even though the body of Brahman is involved, the, the components of the body become defective, still does not affect the, the Brahman because he is a transcendental nature, also is invoked, he is absolutely real and another is relatively real. For them both they call it a real, even though one is changing real, another is changeless real. Same thing is we call it, one is absolutely real, another is transactionally real. Only difference is between the Visistha Advaita and Advaita is Bhagavan Ramanuja considers even in the in the liberation also this these distinctions remain, whereas from the point of Advaita, from the point of the totality alone is realization, and in that there is no distinctions of any kind. We will talk about it later in terms of the difference, in terms of the moksha between the Advaita and Visistha Advaita. But from the point of the, the comments of Bhagavan Ramanuja about Advaita is, the nature of the ignorance itself is questionable because you say it is neither real nor unreal. And the second objection they talk about is essentially how can you have a distinction of the, the knowledge because when you say that ignorance is removed by knowledge. So ignorance is removed by knowledge and knowledge is nothing but the nature of the pure Brahman. If ignorance can be removed, it has to be opposite to the ignorance. The knowledge should be opposite to ignorance. And how can you have opposite to ignorance at the same time it is there will ignorance is there. So this objection comes from the point that there are two types of knowledges that according to Advaita. This is what now we will go into details. In terms of the jnana is, the knowledge itself we distinguish, one is the particular knowledge that is the objective knowledge and another is the swarupa jnanam of the nature of the Brahman himself which is of the intrinsic nature of Brahman. So how are we distinguishing this knowledge? Distinguishing comes in the picture, one is called a vritti jnanam. The vritti jnanam is that it is a mental mode of this objective knowledge is due to mental mode. So for that we need to understand how a knowledge occurs. So we go back to into the analysis of what exactly knowledge, how exactly knowledge occurs or knowledge of any object occurs. So if you go to the Vedanta Paribhasha written by Dharmaraj Advarinda, that's the analysis of the Pramana has been done there where the perception of how it a perceptual knowledge occurs has been explained as per the Advaitic system. So the according to Mimamsa also, when I see an object, the, when I see an object, the mind along with the senses go and, uh, and grasp the object. So mind travels along with the sense objects to the object and it is the senses that gather. So the object is as though gathered by the mind and the senses gather the attributes of the object. So when the senses gather the attributes of the object, then they bring it back the, as a vritti in the mind. Vritti means a thought in the mind. Vritti is any perturbation of the mind is called vritti. 
So, vritti means a thought arises in the mind. So, when I see an object out there, a thought rises that I am seeing a pot. So, when I say pot out there, but the pot thought rises in my mind. So, pot thought in the mind is a vritti in the mind. And consciousness, as we went through in terms of reflected consciousness in the in the in the subtle body or in the in the mind get further reflected falls on the on the on the thought and reflected back to the mind so this is how the knowledge happens consciousness and once get reflected by the subtle body we call it the chidabhasa and in the reflection process it makes the mind alive otherwise mind itself is inert now mind is become a active and so is the body all are due to the reflected consciousness or conditioned consciousness or chidabhasa so when just as the moon has become a luminous entity by reflection of the sunlight in the same way, the mind has become a conscious entity by the reflection of the all-pervading consciousness. Why it reflected? That is the capacity of the, of the subtle body to reflect, just as the capacity of the mirror is to reflect. Whatever that light falls on, on it, the reflection occurs. The reflection, quality of the reflection depends on the quality of the medium of reflection. So once the, the consciousness, light of consciousness falls on the, on the, on the mind, it, the mind has though become a conscious entity and it's reflecting now or shining now, that light falls on the thought that rises in the mind. So now we are talking about the mind as though split into two. The pure mind, which is a mind, which is the basic mind where the whole Chidabhasa is occurring, the reflection of the light is occurring. Now that reflected light now falls on the, on the thought that is rising and then gets reflected back to the mind. So what is a thought? Thought is nothing but a vritti, a perturbation that occurs when I see an object here. So when I see an object there, a chair there or a pot there, the, the senses are bringing information about the attributes of the object that is the form and if it is a form and a color and if there is another sound, all other five senses gather their respective attributes of the object, bring the information as a thought in the mind and a thought in the mind is known now by light of consciousness that is from the chidabhasa that is reflected light of consciousness by the by the by the mind falls on the thought and gets reflected back to the mind so mind has two thoughts now one two two lights one is original light chidabhasa that is illumining the mind itself and the other light coming back reflected light from the thought so one is the objective Ruti. Another is the subject knower I am. So knower I am, thought also rises called aham ruti and idam ruti. Idam ruti means this thought, this thought, this thought. So every thought that rises, I am illumining as though from the light, this reflected light from the mind is illumining that object and that reflection back into the mind. So subject, object, reality, the subject, object, knowledge arises in the mind. So whenever there is reflection back to the mind, that is objective knowledge and immediately, spontaneously, without any further uh, the prakriya, another further activity, knowledge also that I am knower of this object also arises in the mind. So subject thought, that's called aham rutti, object thought, idam rutti, both arising. Subject thought, idam rutti arises spontaneously whenever the idam thought comes. So I know this, I know this. So this is only a, a, a modification, a temporally modification of the mind. When I see a chair, there is a chair thought in raising in the mind. So when I turn into the table on the other side and look at the table, now I have a table vritti or table thought. Its table thought is not superimposed on the previous the chair thought. Chair thought is already gone and now table thought has come. So every thought comes and goes as I keep looking and thoughts continuously go from another. But in every thought, I know the thought. Every thought that raises in the mind, I have a knowledge of the thought. I cannot have, I cannot think without knowing it. So every thought is being illumined by constantly by the light of consciousness that I am, that is I am is nothing but the chidabhasa that is reflecting the light 
from the original original consciousness so you have to look at there is a you can see analogy is suppose i in a full moon night i am seeing the object on the earth and how am i seeing the object in the moonlight i say but moon doesn't have any light what i am seeing is only a reflected sunlight from the moon first sunlight falls on the moon and gets reflected and that reflected light falls on the object and that light is getting reflected after the object into the my retina so when i say i see an object there what i am seeing is actually i am seeing sunlight but all these processes are ignored because i am only looking at the object hey, i am seeing the object in the moonlight moon doesn't have a light of its own but even then my understanding is only at that level because i am not paying critical attention of the process behind it so in every knowledge consciousness is coming into picture through this reflection process that has to be understood so according to mimamsa and also according to the advaita vedanta philosophy which follows the mimamsa he says mind is going out and grasping the object and along with it senses are bringing the object and the object and the attributes because attributes and the objects are inseparable so i cannot remove the attribute and leave the object there so the understanding is i am i am gathering both the attributes and the object also which forms a vrutti but the, from the scientific point that's not exactly how it happens so we have to follow exactly the principle what really happens from the physics also the light falls on the object and the light gets reflected by the object and the reflected light is falling on the retina forming an image and the image is transmitted through the optical nervous system as an electrical signal and the electrical signal is converted which is a the electrical signal is at the at the grosser level is converted into software as a thought process since now we are familiar with the computer technology we can say the the hardware is the brain and the software is the mind and the thought also so mind going out and grasping the object is traditional view the fact of the matter is it is coming to the mind and the, the image is forming uh, but from the point on the vrutti thought is rising from then on it is the same philosophy whether it's a physical or even from the scientific point how exactly the electrical signal transforms into a software thought we do not know there must be a code lord has provided and that converts the objective information into electrical signal to a, a language that the mind can read a thought can be known and the form is taken by the form as a, a reflected form so attributes of the object belongs to the attributes of the object belongs to the object only i am not taking the form so when you are looking at my hand your form of the hand remains with the hand only but only the reflected light which is correspond to the form of the of the of the of the hand a form said image and image has the same reciprocal relationship with the object the image depends upon the the my sense capability and also the the <coughs> other ingredients like whether the in the flight or not all that is involved in the process so in the process what exactly is happen vrutti is formed somehow that objective information is converted into a subtle information which is called vrutti and the vrutti is known when consciousness is getting reflected so light of consciousness has to fall on the vrutti on the thought and getting reflected back then only i have the knowledge of the thought but the thought is nothing but the object outside therefore i have the knowledge of object so all objective knowledge is or involving as a vrutti gnanam whereas the brahman knowledge is not of that type and that we will go into the more details so there is a distinction between the swarupa gnanam and also about the the vrutti gnanam and this we need to differentiate in terms of understanding of what is self realization versus objective knowledge we will stop with here om purnamada पूर्णमिद पूर्णात्पूर्णमुदच्छति पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्य ओं शाति 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 
हरि ही ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि ही ओम